my presentation is going to be a little bit uh, more technical than Emilia's. So, um, uh, and I'm going to talk about the features that we already had for a long time, not just the ones that are coming in 4.0. Um, my name is Marina Glency, and I'm a technical architect of uh, Moodle Workplace. I'm not exactly the person who speaks in the presentations a lot, so bear with me. And also this desk is tilted and my water slides off it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, um, first of all, I, I've noticed that there is um, a bit of a misunderstanding about what workplace is, so I want to clarify it in the beginning. Uh, Moodle workplace is not a fork of Moodle. It's not something completely uh, standalone. It is Moodle LMS in the base of it, plus a little bit of core modific uh, modifications, uh, plus our plugins. I think at the moment we have about 17 plugins. Uh, uh, some of them are separated because of uh, separating functionality. Some of them are separated because we need different plugin types. Uh, but um, uh, most of them are not intended to work in separation from each other. Uh, so yeah, a lot of Times people ask, can we just use this plugin from Workplace? Uh, probably not, <laughs> uh, unless it's um, certificate plugins, uh, the plugin set that is already available as um, a third-party plugin. All other uh, plugins, unfortunately, work very closely uh, in coordination with each other, especially with multi-tenancy, and if you take it outside it will probably break because it will call some functions from multi-tenancy or call some something from our um, element library. This is why um, moving something from workplace to LMS takes time and especially report builder took a lot of time and like Emilia said we are pretty exhausted after that and we lost a lot of time. Uh, but we will still be contributing to Moodle LMS all the time. We will be um, moving either existing workplace features or we will be developing new features in LMS so we can use them in workplace as well. Because this is our commitment, our agreement with uh, everybody, I guess, the whole community. So um, Moodle uh, workplace, um, has the same version numbering as Moodle LMS. So three, Workplace 3.11 is based on LMS 3.11, Workplace 4.0 is based on 4.0, and so on. Uh, and mi minor releases as well. So with the minor releases, we release them one day after Moodle LMS releases the minor releases, so we always can have secure product with all security fixes. With the major releases, we normally delay it um, by a month, but 4.0, well, much longer time because of a lot of changes in the UI and also converting everything that we had to use core report build instead of tool report builder. <laughs> okay, so yes, another question that is being asked. So if you want to try Workplace, you can move your um, uh, LMS side to Workplace uh, and then you can move it back from Workplace to LMS. So this is possible. The only thing that you're losing is all the data that is in workplace plugins. So everything else, like course enrollments, uh, course um, act um, activity of users, cohorts, whatever you have in LMS stays with you. Um, so I'm going to talk about, sorry, I'm going to go back to this slide. So there are a lot of features in workplace. I'm not going to cover all of them today. I'm going to talk about only um, multi-tenancy and dynamic rules and a little bit about organization structure. Um, otherwise, I just, I'll just have to show just a little bit of everything in this time and then pretty much will be the same as showing nothing. But you can come to our stand, you can come to uh, Moodle stand, or part, our premium partners, and they will give you uh, demos on the other features that are interesting for you. Right, so multi-tenancy was the very first requirement for the workplace, and it's uh, something that differentiates it very much from LMS, and it's 
something that requires the most of the core modifications that we have. Um, this is something that would not be possible if it was just a plugin, because there are a lot of places in uh, Model LMS where um, you see the list of all users in the system. For example, you go to the course, to the manual enrollment, you click the manual enroll button. There is no way uh, in Moodle LMS to say, show me only a subset of these users. You will see all users in the, um, um, on the side. So with the help of multi-tenancy, things like that um, have restrictions, so they show only users that you are allowed to see because of your uh, tenant allocation. So the requirements for multi-tenancy were separate user management, so that you have several sub-organizations and a tenant administrator and each of them can manage users in this sub-organization. Um, separated content, contents, so it's like you have courses that belong to one tenant that another tenant users don't see and so forth, and branding. So each uh, users from each tenant will see the site a little bit different, different colors, different uh, blocks, and things like this. Um, but at the same time, keeping the single code base and having shared contents that everybody can access from all the tenants and also cross-tenant reporting. So I hope I don't need to explain in much more details what multi-tenancy is. Uh, I can show you what we have in the workplace. So the very first thing we implemented for multi-tenancy was um, category level capability to browse courses. So you can say that um, uh, this user, like for example, has a role to browse uh, courses in this category, and this user is another category, and they don't see uh, each other's courses. So this was a huge change that we contributed to LMS before we even started Workplace. Before that, if you remember, each user can see either all courses, browser the all courses, or none. It's like you couldn't really separate it on the per user or per role. Um, per tenant user management was another uh, thing that was in the, from the very beginning, so the tenant administrator can manage users in their tenant, and uh, per tenant theme settings, the so branding. Over the time, so the workplace, we started working on workplace already over four years ago. Um, so over the time, we add more and more features to multi-tenancy. As you could see on the roadmap, Emilia was showing, we're going to add even more features to multi-tenancy, because this is something people keep asking. So we added uh, CSV user upload. For example, you can um, give tenant administrator permission to upload the users through CSV without um, um, seeing or affecting other tenants. You can, um, tenant, uh, the global administrator can upload users and allocate them to the te uh, tenants from CSV um, uh, file. Um, per tenant user profile field, so you can configure which profile fields belong to one tenant, which can, uh, to another, or visible. Uh, per tenant authentication, this is a gradual process, so at the moment we uh, made um, manual uh, authentication method, multi-tenant, self-registration, OAuth2, and SAML2, and SAML2 is actually an interesting one because this is not uh, part of Moodle LMS or Workplace. This is a separate plugin developed by Catalyst, and we um, added hooks to their plugin that allow it to work with multi-tenancy, and if it's installed on Workplace, it becomes multi-tenant. If it's installed on Moodle LMS, it is like it was before. Um, we added per tenant uh, default dashboards, so the dashboard that every user sees when they um, log in, it can be uh, customized per tenant, and um, um, mobile app 4.0 will also have a uh, possibility to have branded mobile apps per tenant. Oh, I forgot to mention that I'm only talking about LMS features here, all work list features, they are multi-tenant from the very beginning, so all the dynamic rules, organization structure, programs, certifications, everything, it is all multi-tenant. And it was multi-tenant from the beginning. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to demo. So as I, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, per-tenant authentication methods, and this is the demonstration how they would look on the login page. They also work with multi-tenant in terms of synchronization, but uh, uh, I think login page is more visual. So this is one of the tenants, uh, login page of one of the tenants on the, my side. As you can see, it doesn't have any um, um, buttons here. 
And if I switch to another tenant, by the way, this tenant switch on the login page is optional. You don't have to have it. Um, you can see that this uh, users from this tenant, they can uh, sign up. Yeah, Self-registration is enabled. And uh, if, you can, if you switch to yet another tenant, they don't have self-sign uh, registration, um, registration, but they have Google. And also, the auth two providers can be configured per tenant. Um, as for the um, user profile fields, there is another, sorry. Um, now the difference, so for example, I created different profile fields per tenant already on this side and added them to the um, registration form. So you can see that if user from this um, tenant is trying to self-register, that they're being asked about their uh, favorite color. And if user from this tenant tries to sign up, um, there are different fields here. So this is out of the box in Model Workplace. You don't have to install any additional plugins, so you can have different profile fields per tenant. Um, I have it. <laughs> my notes here. Um, so let's um, okay. That's that's an interesting complication. <laughs> Why is my keyboard not working? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I keep having technical difficulties today. You can see that I'm a technical architect, yeah? Um, so global administrator um, can manage the tenants uh, and can manage the uh, quick login links for them. So if you give one of these um, um, links to the individual users, uh, they, when they click on it, they will immediately see the login page of their tenant. They, um, so they can have their branding from the very beginning. And uh, as you saw in Emilia's presentation, one of the things on the roadmap is per tenant um, URLs. So you can have, even have different URLs per tenant in the future. <laughs> but it's already kind of possible with some workarounds. I was just showing to somebody in the, our workplace stand how to configure it even right now. Um, for each tenant, okay, it's, for each tenant, you can have uh, their own branding, so like their logo, their site name, um, um, their authentication configuration, so which authentication methods are enabled, settings for individual authentication methods, and so on. I'm, I'm not gonna show all the in, in the details, but I'm just briefly showing that this is how you configure it all. So this is not another thing I want to show you. So as a um, global administration, I can, administrator, sorry, I can go to the list of all users in the system, so where I will see the tenant, and I'll see the profile fields for each of these tenants. So this, but if I um, go to my tenant management, so the administrator also has their own tenant. So everybody, all, all the users belong to one tenant in, in workplace. Um, I'll see less fields because uh, I don't see the tenant field. They're all from the same tenant. Uh, so as a global administrator, I can switch between the tenants. Um, so in this tenant, for example, if I go to the user management, I can see the profile fields the favorite color, so it on the uh, dashboard that belongs to this particular tenant. Um, and this is how you create Reddit users in Workplace, by the way. <laughs> so all everything is in model pop-ups. It's like 
less clicks, less waiting time to load the page. And in fact, uh, the model forms that we developed for Workplace, we also contributed to Model LMS. So this is might be something that wasn't very visual for the users, but it's another contribution that we made. Okay, so uh, that's all I want to show today about multi-tenancy, but there's much more to it. Um, so now talking about organization structure. So organization structure uh, in uh, um, model workplace is designed to separate access and provide more granular reporting. We're not trying to substitute HR systems. Uh, we provide some tools to integrate with them um, instead. So there's CSV upload, their web services. I think um, some partners created their own integrations with uh, individual HR systems. Um, uh, we don't ship any out of the box in Moodle, we, but probably we should. We just need to pick what one, which one is the most used. Um, so it's very flexible. One person can have more than one job and report to more than one manager, but it doesn't have to, can have no jobs at all. Um, as hierarch hierarchical structure in both departments and positions, so it's like you can report, if you report on department, you can include or exclude sub-departments, for example. Um, there are a bunch of predefined reports that come with Moodle Workplace that are based on organization structure, and Emilia was showing some uh, uh, for my teams, my team's blog, and all the reports that are linked from it, so it's like when the manager can see um, reports on their um, teams uh, and like overdue programs and things like this. Um, and also, you can use organization structure in the reports. And this is um, what I want to show. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to have two windows for this, because I'm going to uh, log in as um, Sorry, I walk away from microphone. So I want to log in as a tenant administrator and as a uh, manager in our organization. So this is a um, tenant administrator. They do not have any jobs. They don't have any courses. Um, so they don't have any teams as well. So you can see, by the way, did you notice that this menu is different when I'm tenant administrator because it doesn't have the global section? Um, so if I go to my organization structure, I can browse or edit organization structure. So you can see that there is a hierarchical structure of departments and uh, also hierarchical structure of positions. Well, I think this is not very common. Uh, it's for the demo side, but usually, normally you would have either hierarchy in one or another. It's, when it's both, it might get confusing. Um, and you can see that positions, uh, uh, some positions have uh, manager permissions, and you see my mouse, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, there are permissions for this um, manager, for example, this manager is able to allocate their team members to the programs and certifications, view, view their reports, and receive notifications. Again, I'm not going to go deep into each of these functionalities, but this is, um, like how it's all configured. And the jobs assignments is just a list of all the jobs that staff has. Um, so how the organization structure can be used. So when you go to the report builder, um, I missed the button. When you go to the report builder, um, so I already have a report here. This is user report. It has employee name and email address. So first of all, what I can do is I can add the, um, fields from the organization structure, so I can add the user's department or position. I like this position department field, so that has both. And um, also you can see that some users have several jobs, so I'm going to aggregate it so it looks nicer. So I'll just add comma separate value. So I'll have one line per user now, and all their jobs. Um, I can add a condition to the report based on the organization structure, for example. I can say that I only see people 
Um, from this branch of positions or from that department. Um, so this is report builder. It's uh, up to you how you configure. But there's an interesting one, uh, interesting condition um, that doesn't exist as a filter. It only exists as a condition. Uh, it's called a relation to the report viewer. So what I can configure here is I can say that I want uh, managers to see only people that report to them. So this, uh, so this uh, report will only show people who report to me. And as I said, I don't have any jobs here, so I have not, nobody who reports to me. <clears throat> okay, so now if I log in as manager, And I go to okay. And I go to my reports. I don't see anything. I don't see anything here because I wasn't added to the audience. It's a good mistake to make because now I'm going to show you audiences. So I go to the audience tab and I say that this report should be available to all managers. So now if I go, this is another window where I'm a manager, and I refresh it, and I can see the report. And if I look at this report. I only see seven people who are in my team. I don't see anybody else from the organization. Um, so this is one way to use the organization structure in the reports. And you can also use um, organization structure in the uh, custom pages. So um, Emilia briefly showed custom pages. That's something. Sorry, microphone's a bit far away. <laughs> um, it's something new in um, new feature in Moodle 4.0. So let's say I'm creating I'm going to show you actually like five different features in this. Uh, I'm creating new custom page. Um, I'm adding a um, block to it which is a report block. And then I configure this report block to show the user list. Nothing to display for me because I don't have any uh, subordinates. And um, I also, now I will not forget to add managers to the audience. And Going back to my manager, you can see that in my, uh, in my top panel, I have home dashboard, my courses, and my teams. And if I re refresh it, now I have a custom page, hello world. And I click on it, and I can see the same report that I just created in a block on a custom page. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't hear excitement. <laughs> um, so this is what I wanted to show you about the organization structure. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. Dynamic rules is the wonderful functionality that actually was designed as uh, something significantly simpler than what it is now. And then we, at some moment, we realized, uh, like, why not make it very flexible? Uh, so you can see that initially we were trying to call it like dynamic cohorts or. Um, automated enrollments, um, but then we're like, how about we add also this or also that, and then in the end we're like, how about we just create something similar to the IFTTT, I don't know if you're familiar with the IFTTT, it's if this then that, this then, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's what it stands for. Uh, it's uh, basically, each dynamic rule is a combination of conditions and actions, and you can mix and match, you can, um, um, send notifications to people who have overdue learning. You can uh, award certificates on completion of something. You can enroll users based on their um, country, for example. Um, like possibility here are endless, and I've seen such interesting implementations of dynamic rules. 
uh, because we d you probably know that we don't yet have self-enrollment to programs. So what I've seen people did is that they created a portal course um, when they configured that um, self-enrollment on this portal course and also enrollment duration of like one minute or something. So then, uh, and then they set up um, dynamic rules like if user is enrolled in this course, allocate them to that program. So people, uh, students will, I think it was even paid course, so when they would pay for this portal course, they would get enrolled and they would automatically allocate it to the program. Then they would be unenrolled from the course after one minute, so it no longer appears on their dashboard. And voila, they, they just paid for self-enrollment in the program. Uh, I thought it was very genius. <laughs> Like what, uh, sometimes I listen to our partners or Moodle, um, when Moodle ES tells us about what they did with uh, their clients and I'm like, wow, I didn't, I didn't even know you could use Workplace like this. Um, so I know Anis is <laughs> holding a sign for me. So I'll rush a little bit here. So um, dynamic rules um, uh, are not exactly the same as Cajon synchronization, for example. They're only one way. So if, um, uh, action is executed only when user matches condition. When they unmatch, there is no unaction. So they cannot, they will not, uh, so if your dynamic rules, for example, uh, course enrollment, if user is in cohort, um, uh, when they are no longer in the cohort, they will not be unenrolled. Because some of the actions do not have this reverse action uh, equivalent. And also, um, reverse action may require completely different configurations. So, and sometimes you don't want reverse action. So to make it more simple, we just don't have any reverse action at all. So all dynamic rules are one way. If you match, when you match, uh, the action is executed for you. So the uh, cohort synchronization enrollment method, if it was implemented in dynamic rules, would have to be two dynamic rules. If user is in cohort, enroll them in the course. If user is not in the cohort, cohort unenroll them. Um, I just want to have like very brief um, de demo of dynamic rule, how it actually, how, how you can configure it. So when you So I created a new uh, dynamic rule. There, here's the list of conditions that I can choose for it. And there are a lot of them. So the, the list I had in the presentation was very short. And, um, is, rem you remember uh, one of the um, tenants had a profile field displayed on the uh, sign-up form saying that, like, what is the your area of work? So here I can say, um, it's unfortunately a different tenant, so it's not here. Basically, what I wanted to say. Okay, let's let's do it on the uh, country. So, if your country is um, so many countries, if your country is Spain, then um, enroll to a course. Um, I don't know. This I picked a random course. Um, you can also see list of matching users, nobody from Spain, unfortunately. Uh, if you, when you enable it, it automatic, if there was somebody from Spain, it would automatically enroll them, and every new person who changes their profile field or who is just registered, uh, when, they, uh, when they register, for example, they're automatically enrolled. It's uh, very helpful for eliminating this um, blank page experience. I, I learned a new word in this mode. <laughs> uh, so when you, uh, log in for the first time, uh, you already have some content and this is content, this content is personalized for you based on some, uh, something in your profile. Um, I wish I had more time to show dynamic rules or other features. Or just remember how to switch to presentation. Um, one last thing I wanted to add about dynamic rules is that the way we design them, uh, new conditions and actions can be added in other plugins without any dependencies or anything. They just put the 
particular class in particular location, and then it appears in, uh, in the selector for the conditions and actions. So it's very easily extendable. So um, I have three minutes now for, <laughs> for the questions. Okay, thank you, Marina. I know Marina would spend the whole day just talking about different features. She's so excited as we are, but unfortunately, you know, the, the Moodle party theme this year is time travel, so that's what you are g having now, gaining some time to, to discuss. I'm afraid I think we don't have time for any question, but if you have any questions, you can meet Marina and all the workplace team at the Moodle products bar as well as our mm, premium partners and partners that are around here, and they are also sponsoring the event. So thank you very much, Marina. Thank you.